particular classroom space. Okay. But they never retired. And me, I'm an academic. And academics actually never retire or don't necessarily have to retire because even if I'm not teaching at the University of Ghana, I probably would be doing research, which is academic. Uh, it's, it's an academic activity, or I may be called upon because of my expertise to supervise uh, a, a thesis uh, so that I can help, you know, um, bring up the next generation of. Uh, was Young communication academics. study something you chose to do or you entered it by accident and you loved it? So far, because it's obvious you loved it and you love it still. <laughs> Very good question. I, I think that I wasn't one of those people who very early on in my life thought I'd be a journalist or I'd be an academic. Um, so in that sense, I came upon it much later on in life. Uh, but I did know what my competencies were. Uh, and uh, communication was one of my competencies. And so when I was looking for a profession that I would enjoy doing, because you have to love the profession in order to do it, wake up in the morning uh, and, and get going for, for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. that was one of the options. And, and so I did English and History at the University of Ghana, and then I did my master's in the U.S., and I, that's when I got into communication studies. So were you writing articles? Were you doing TV presentation? Or you just simply went into the classroom from day one? No, 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 no. I, 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 I was a journalist. I, I practiced journalism in the US for, um, for quite a few years mm -hmm. before I came back to okay. Ghana. In fact, I came back to Ghana in a hurry because we were about to have our first democratic elections 92? in 1992. So I think I came back in October because I wanted to cover the elections. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, I, and, and, and then stayed on um, because then we were in a democracy and I felt it was a viable profession for people like me to, to be able to, to, to engage in. And, and, but, but before I came back to Ghana, uh, Chronicle had already started publishing. As a Chronicle started media. publishing in 1992, oh, and they invited me to be a columnist. So I was writing a column before I came back to Ghana. So you didn't do anything with Daily Graphic, because at the time a lot of the senior journalists or senior communicators were doing articles and things for the graphic, because it was like the only platform available. No, because I didn't practice during the time of unconstitutional okay, okay, rule. Okay. Uh, you know, we had this long period of unconstitutional rule. Uh, the longest was a PNDC period, of course, from 81 yeah. to 1993. Yeah. We had the elections in 92 mm -hmm. and 93. So no, I, I wasn't in the country for, for most of that period. So when you came back, you did your work purely with Chronicle. You didn't do any other media? No, I did. I mean, I, 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 I had a column in Chronicle for a while. I had a column in the Mirror, I did Joy, okay. um, I was on, on panels, I hosted Talking Point at a certain point, I freelanced I, for, for a number of publications. Um, but then I became an academic quite early, I think I was employed in 1993. I see, you went June away 1993. Do you think newspaper is a dying business or a business that will soon die? <laughs> That's an interesting distinction. We do know that um, newspapers are endangered for all kinds of reasons. People's um, reading habits have shifted from physical newspaper reading uh, to online. Uh, people are also very engaged in, in getting news and information in very different ways, including even from news comedians, for example, in some parts of the world. There's radio, there's television, uh, there are blogs, there's YouTube. So people get information from a variety of sources. So newspapers for many, many years now have been struggling to survive. Part of it is their business model, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because they depend on advertising, mm -hmm. and advertising has moved online. Mm -hmm. And so your traditional newspaper is struggling uh, to get to attract advertising because the the, the numbers are not there. Mm -hmm. The the fewer people read newspapers, the l less attractive newspapers are to advertisers. 
So but is it because our society generally doesn't like to read or it is a global thing? The reading world is disappearing to the listening and viewing world, maybe. I think it's global except that some more um, established newspapers in the West have found ways to survive. They've changed their business model around a bit. So they do give you access to read for a certain limited time or some subscriptions that encourage people to read. For us, you know, newspapers, there's the expense of newspapers as well. So if I want news and information, if I can get it for free, why do I want to pay money uh, to get news and information? Okay. So from where you sit, watching journalists do their job, I'm sure you have a lot of critique of the work we do. Do you sometimes listen to the radio and be like, oh, no, did he just say that? Or read a newspaper article and be like, did he just write that? And did the editor just approve that? Do you have challenges with our profession, this journalism job? Yes, uh, there are many times when I, I do that. And it's, I think it's not just me. It's a lot of people in this country. But of course, because I'm in journalism, perhaps I pay a little bit more attention to it and, and and you know um, when people don't fact check and then they say things or when people don't mind their language or especially um, well not especially but all, it that includes spelling errors mm -hmm. for example so there's nothing more embarrassing than my classmate will send me a, a newspaper headline uh, with a, a, a typo you know, as though I'm responsible for all the journalists <laughs> in, in this country, and therefore, if they make mistakes, you, you know, yeah, I should be held responsible. But what is it? What's your assessment of the media profession now? I mean, it's a huge field, isn't it? And there's a lot of good stuff happening um, within the field. Doesn't mean everybody does the right thing. Doesn't mean everybody's as competent, you know. Um, but I do think that there's a lot of opportunity uh, that exists now for people who want to be really professional to find a more professional news outlet that will support them to do uh, more innovative reporting, um, you know, and a reporting that really speaks to the, the purpose of journalism. Mm. Do you believe, and someone asked me a question recently, uh, whether there should be political journalists or political journalism. Journalists are supposed to be doing their work. Politicians also do their work. Do you think someone can be a politician and a journalist? What do you think about a journalist who decides that for me, my job is to promote a certain political party? You are the one who teach the profession. So how do you assess things like that? Okay. Now, I think we have to make a distinction between the way the term political journalism is, is, is being um, used in, in this context. So political journalism traditionally means journalists who write political stories. Okay. So they, their, their specialty, just like business journalism or, or sports, journalism. sports journalism, so that's their field, field. Yeah. that's their specialization. Okay. Having said that, we do know that historically in the Western world, in Africa, in Ghana, there have been political newspapers, okay, who have a, vi a, a, a mission and a vision to promote a particular pol political course. I don't have a problem with that so long as everybody is clear that that's where they're coming from. You understand? You're labeled, everybody comes to understand that this is the kind of media outlet you are. So they know what they are buying. You know, so they know what they're buying, you know, and they will assess whatever they, they read based on their knowledge that you have a certain ideology. The danger comes when people position themselves as mainstream journalists that are supposed to be doing objective, in quotes, journalism. But unbeknownst to us, they're pushing a particular uh, political agenda. Hidden motive. Hidden motives, and that's the problem. Do you see that sometimes? Do you, are you able to read between the lines and see those things sometimes? And what do you feel, what do you make of that? Well, I don't like to impute motive, okay? okay? okay. And it's very difficult um, if you don't know for sure. 
uh, and so I may, I may read a report by you, I can say that that report is biased against a particular political position or seems to be overtly in favor of a, a particular political position. But I don't know whether it's simply because you couldn't get the other side or you're lazy or it's deliberate. Or it's deliberate. Okay. I have n no idea what okay. your motive is. Okay. But on the surface, the latent content that I am reading, I can say that this copy uh, of this story is slanted in this manner. Mm -hmm. You rushed back to Ghana because democracy was in the air and you were coming to practice journalism. Um, 30 years on, are you disappointed in how the state treats journalists or you believe we are we are doing well, as in we are progressing well. Because recently the issue of culture of silence was back in the news again. How has the practice of journalism over the years been? Do you see us progressing or governments force us to retrogress? Well, I mean, if you're taking a, a diachronic look at journalism um, practice over many, many years, let's say post-independence, then of course, there's no question in my mind that we've, we are in a much better place than we were in the past. And so we are no, nowhere near there. Post, post um, PNDC. PNDC into the Fourth Republic, we know that the beginning periods of journalism were also quite uh, uh, rocky. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the NDC was in power, we had a constitution, however, journalists were thrown in jail for contempt, etc., etc., etc. Um, we also, yeah, and, and, and then it got better, mm -hmm. and it's been getting better. Mm -hmm. However, we do also know and, um, that there have been attacks on journalists from both state and non-state actors, and that's disturbing, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so that tells you that journalists must always be vigilant because there's always a risk of reversal. Okay. There's an allegation that for a lot of you who practice journalism during the PNDC, NDC days, who are the senior people who run journalism in the country now, you are, you are embittered by how that administration treated you. For that reason, your generation has a general dislike for the NDC and has a love of a sort for the MPP, namely because of a number of things, including the repeal of the criminal libel and so on. Is that a fair assessment <laughs> of your, you and your friends and your dislike or love? For I think that's funny. And I'm laughing because I did not practice journalism under the PNDC. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't live in Ghana. I mean, I lived in Ghana as a student. I mean, I, I'm not such a dinosaur. So when the, so when the <laughs> PNDC came into power, mm -hmm. I was a student, okay. you know. Okay. And after that, you know, I, I went and did my master's and lived in the U.S. for a while practicing journalism mm -hmm. there. So I have no um, personal um, acts Experience. to grind okay. against anybody. Okay. So I, I'm not sure that's, that's right because even during the PNDC period, there were people who were aligned to their philosophy mm -hmm who are journalists. And so I, I, I don't think you can make a sweeping statement okay. like that. This is Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omar Rosanda Amadou. My guest is uh, Professor Odrigad Yacob. We are coming to have a conversation about promotion of proper human sexual rights in Ghanaian family. But uh, when you get here, and you want to just take one or two things away from her. Let me conclude this before we come to that conversation. You are a feminist. Yes. Many people, again, think fem feminism is embittered women who fight men for no cause, give me a chance, or rather I'm giving you an opportunity to explain to those who may have such a thought, what feminism is about and why do that? Are you just an angry woman who wants to just see men go down? Do I look angry to you? <laughs> <laughs> I know no, I hope that's not how you see feminism. No, I'm just putting I, I, I do think that there's a lot of um, misunderstanding. Perhaps if I want to be unkind, I'll say a lot of ignorance about what feminism is about. Because a lot of women 
even who should be supporting feminists and who actually do things that you would think support the feminist cause are afraid because they don't want to be tagged as bitter. I think that's a stereotype. Mm -hmm. I think that's a stereotype. I think the short definition of feminism that we should keep in our minds when we hear about a feminist is somebody who is committed uh, to um, gender equality, somebody who is committed to making sure that women are, are empowered, somebody who is committed to the human rights and, and uh, of, 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 of both genders mm -hmm. or all genders okay. uh, and doesn't want to see... So you want to see one gender above the other? No, why, why do we want one gender above the other? Mm. But we do know that there are historical reasons why women are not as empowered as they should be. We, we live in a society that we know is patriarchal, mm -hmm. okay? And that patriarchal ideology um, uh, obtains not just in Ghana or in Africa, but in many parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So men have enjoyed privileges for a long, long time. Men who have ruled the world mostly have had ideologies that have not promoted women's rights, mm -hmm. women's equality, uh, women's empowerment. And people had to fight. If you think, today, you wouldn't think twice about me voting. It would be upset if somebody said, sure. you know, I couldn't vote. But, but women had to, the so-called feminists had to fight for women to have the vote, for women to own property, for women, even in this country, it was only recently that women could now post bail. Why can't I post bail for somebody, for example? Women's education what they could study, what they couldn't study. So there's a whole range of um, societal, cultural practices that did not allow women to do certain things. It's good you mentioned women education. I recall seeing leaflets about girl child education. And I later saw an article that said girl child education campaign has led to the detriment of the boy child education. Something to that line. That because of this whole agenda, we're focusing more on the female and leaving the male. Do you not think that um, maybe we should have a version of feminism in, among men too, if we have one for women? No, but you know, the, the, there were reasons why we had a girl-child campaign. The reasons were clear. People needed to be educated, needed to be made aware, needed to be encouraged to take their girl-child to school mm -hmm. because they weren't. So mm -hmm. there were disproportionate numbers. Now that goal has been achieved, mm -hmm. according to the statistics. Mm -hmm. So there's an equal playing field. If boys are endangered uh, in coming to school, we need to look at why are boys endangered? What can we do to support boys? We want an equal society. Mm -hmm. We don't want a society where you know um, pe people are disadvantaged, people's uh, human rights are trampled upon. You know, people don't matter. We want everybody to matter. But we need to call it feminism. Do we need to give it a tag? Maybe it's a tag that is putting people off, that this is just a group of people. But are you if, called a Ghanaian? Yes. So why are you called a Ghanaian? Is it the same as... as no, no, no. I'm asking why are you called a Ghanaian? Because of my Ghanaian. Why, why are you called a Muslim? Because of my religious practice. Yes. So Believe. there are different practices, there are different beliefs. And people don't mind. I certainly don't mind being identified as a feminist because it tells people something about my identity, something that I, they can hold me to. Mm -hmm. So they can say, but you call yourself a feminist, you've just done such and such a thing. Don't you think that's contrary? And it's also for me, it's a reminder that I have to keep in mind certain things that I do, if indeed I think that I'm a committed feminist. This is Face to Face on City TV. My name is Umaru Sanda. My guest is Professor Audrey Gadepo. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the main issue as to why they don't want someone, I think George, MP for Ningo Pram Pram and his friends, to pass a law that uh, they say is properly defining human rights, uh, sexual human rights. Don't go away. <laughs> I see. Hey, you be honest, I'm going to solve for a day, too. Why is that? Life is too short, I know if you waste time. Oh. Where they up at this, why on that they sleep, make you wait a time. Oh. Who they call me if you know me party, call me later. Oh. 
If your girlfriend no go go call your side chick, it makes the link combo. Hey, I summon a summons to buffet and I will cook your cake. Fine, fine. Good day, energy drink. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women, and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. <laughs> Plus is a fully skimmed evaporated milk. Creamy Plus is available in a shop near you. This message has been vetted and approved by the FDA. You're welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. We are discussing a very uh, vexed issue on LGBTQI plus rights. And a bill that has been put before Parliament, a private member's bill that has been put before Parliament with the intent to quote and unquote nip it in the bud. Now there's a counter group that has written a memorandum to the Speaker of Parliament through the Select Committee Chair asking that the whole thing should be thrown away. Uh, one of the persons who signed on that, 15 persons who signed on to that, uh, and let me say that it was seven people who signed the original bill that has been sent to Parliament for the law to be passed. 15 people have signed another memorandum asking that it should be thrown away. And of course, the committee works when they are they reach that stage, they take a memorandum and all of that to guide them in the process. We do not know whether this will affect the bill in any way or not, but it's a conversation we are having. Professor Audrey Gadjeko is one of the people who signed. You're welcome back. Thank you. I think there was 18 people who signed up. Oh, 18? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's yes. fine. It's okay. Now, but we have 15 in the public domain okay. because uh, what I have is numbered up to 15. Okay. Yes. Uh, and it's the end because the bottom says Accra, Ghana, September 29, 2021. <laughs> so maybe the three other people have hidden their names or they are not bold enough to be on I think there was an update. Ah, okay. Forgive me. Okay. okay. Introduction. The LGBT bill currently before Parliament is a major step backwards for democracy, inclusiveness, the protection of minorities and the vulnerable in society and of fundamental human rights in Ghana under the grand sounding banner of quote unquote proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values or quote, the bill seeks to send the country back centuries into the past. Its language of quote unquote recent and treatment, recant and treatment rather, echoes the middle ages of Europe where the state and the church, driven by misguided nations of heresy and witchcraft, hunted down innocence in the name of God and religious values, and so on. You continue to say. This is your introduction. Very, very harsh against the persons who are promoting the bill. I want you to explain to us why you guys decided that let's oppose this bill. Okay. We are individuals coming from different persuasions. Um, and if you look at the list of people, these are people who have a long history of human rights work, including myself, um, human rights work in this country. So when we started hearing about the bill, individually people were concerned about the bill. Reading the bill, we were even more alarmed. And so we decided we needed to do something about the bill. And so one of our members drafted uh, the memorandum. We all fed into it. And, and the rest is history. But I think that our intro signals very clearly what we think about the bill. We think that the bill has no place in the 21st century. We think that the bill is inimical to our constitution. We think the bill promotes witch hunting. And we can talk about why we think that um, um, later on in your conversation. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, and, and so we think that Parliament, of all places, should not be introducing a bill like this. I have interviewed Samuel George, the mm -hmm. MP who is leading the crusade for this bill, mm -hmm. on this particular platform. And he explained how they came up with the idea, how the church is involved, 
how the chief imam's office is involved, how lots of other persons were involved in the drafting of this bill, how lawyers had to pour through the documents and decide that this is good and this is wrong before it was sent to parliament. We've had the Speaker of Parliament make a pronouncement on it. We've had former president, Professor Mills, make a categorical statement on the LGBTQI+. We've had Nana Kufado say so, that not under his administration will this pass. All of these people... Well, what pass? What did Nana Akufuado no, say? No, this let's, particular let's, issue. Let's not, uh, not this particular bill. Him. Not this particular bill. Plus, Professor Mills w is dead. So, no, I'm saying that so maybe you need to clarify what you mean when you, you mention these presidents. Professor Mills at the time said that he was not going to agree for LGBTQI rights to be tied to it. Precisely. That's what he said. So that's a different issue. Nana Akufuado, not on this bill, uh -huh. before, has said that... H LGBTQI will not pass under his government. No. I recall he said what that, he then said he subsequently was, said it was bound to happen. No. Mm -hmm. I, I think that what I recall the president talking about was in relation to marriage, okay. same-sex marriages. Okay. So the president said that not under his watch will there be same-sex marriages. Marriage in the country. And as you know, nobody is advocating okay. for same-sex marriages. All right. Secondly, as Professor Mills said, he did not agree that LGBTQI rights should be tied to, to aid. aid. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be a conditionality. That's not the argument before no us. No problem. So I'm just giving all the peace persons who support St. George's, and let me just say some. But they don't support St. George's position. So the let's be Imam clear. Office. Oh, okay. The, the, uh, ch the church group. Okay. I'm mentioning all these people. Okay. And seven members of parliament have decided, members of parliament have decided to put this together. Who are the people supporting you in this year campaign? We are, we are, as you know, thinking Ghanaians, and as I said, with a long track record in human rights. But only we have, no, we're not the only ones who have uh, submitted memoranda. Mm. So, but I can only speak to our memoranda, you understand. There have been a lot of memoranda. I have seen at least six mm. opposing the bill. Okay. And some of them for much the same reasons that we are opposing the bill, okay? So it's not just us. And... Uh, but when I say just you, the church is huge. The mosque is huge. These two are supporting the proponents of the bill. Who do you have backing you that is so big, that is worthy of celebrating? We don't need to have big people behind us worthy of celebration and that's what's great about a democracy and that's why we have to preserve our democracy because it allows the little people to have their say because if we only relied on the dominant and the status quo we wouldn't be where you are you and i would not be where we are if we lived in the u.s there'll still be slavery okay it takes a small group of committed people who can begin to open up the conversation for change. But the and I'm very comfortable with the fact that we are. But we don't need the church behind us. But we hope that the church will see wisdom in our arguments. That's why we took our time to reflect, to read the bill, and to respond in a systematic manner, showing why the bill is unconstitutional in many of its provisions and why it's also a very inhumane bill. But you, you see, on a campaign, you need the support. Now, if the custodians of the land and the culture of the society, that is the traditional rulers, the religious leaders, are all supporting something, and a group of you, 18, of course, you said that several other people have written and opposed it, but let's just focus on the group of you. If you come up with an opposition to something that has been supported by people who are the custodians of the society in the land, then you would have to do more than this convincing that you are doing, that you are a minority and you are pushing an agenda and it may well work, like someone opposed slavery and it worked. It begins with one. But you have to go more. Have you tried to do consultations with them to see whether what is your thinking is possibly try to convince them before you pen this down? No, no. We needed to pen this down. There was a deadline, wasn't there, mm -hmm. for memoranda. And it's within our rights, and I think it's got to be respected. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we make a mockery 
of the entire parliamentary system. We make a mockery of our democracy. There's a process where bills are supposed to be, how bills are supposed uh, to be passed into law. Part of that process is asking individuals to bring, to, to bring memorandum. So it's a good thing we should be applauded mm -hmm. for sending in a memorandum about how we feel. It's, it's not a fight. But you're not it is our constitutional right. But you're not going to lobby people to but, join you. But, but no, but we are also, and we did say it at our press conference today, organizing a forum where we hope that people who support the bill, we're going to invite them, will come and sit down and we can have a debate about the, the bill. We, in our own different ways, are raising awareness or supporting people who are raising awareness about why it is that it's important that we don't have a bill like this in our democracy. Do you not worry that, and you, you already know that our reading culture is, is dying, that many people may just see on the surface that a number of you professors or lecturers or lawyers have written and said you, you oppose the bill. You know, worry that people would say, Professor Gajeko, Akufado's lawyer, et al., supports Trumo Trumo. Don't you worry about a headline like that? No, and it would, the headline like that will come from you. Not and me. before, you meaning the media. Okay. You know, and, and before we started on this conversation, we talked about media professionalism. We cannot trivialize things that strike at the heart of our democracy. I'd be very disappointed if I saw a headline like that. Yeah, it's because it would tell, well, it, it tells me that the media d is not committed to our democracy. What the media ought to be doing and what the media's role is independent of what civil society may do, independent of what people like us may do, would be for them to take the bill themselves, read it, and critique it. Mm and discuss it within the public domain. That would be really useful for Ghanaians. Okay. Okay. Let's walk through So the... that we don't have name calling. You see, because what, what you're suggesting is that there's a lot of name calling. It's not useful. Mm. Luckily, we're not intimidated. Okay? But it should be there. It should be out there. Well, that's too bad. But I think that I... And the media I, I, to say yes. the president gives you an endorsement because his lawyer in the last election petition is on your... is number one on your list. So, so what? So what? It's your interpretation. That lawyer can do many and does many, many things in his own capacity as a human being with a long track record of human rights. He's, he has defended pro bono many journalists, many, many journalists. I, everybody knows, often, always actually, advocate for the right of journalists. I'm not shy about it. It doesn't matter whether it's a popular position or not. So we're not doing anything. Professor Karikari, also his he set up Media Foundation for West Africa. Okay? So I, I think but that not we are being are consistent. Be politicians. Well, but that's okay. But why are we worried about what people are saying? Let's talk about the bill. Let's talk about the and bill. And the provisions in the bill. I'm not worried about what Let, people let's are talk saying. About the, so what's your understanding of what the group wanted when they brought that bill? They said they are asking for the promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values. But, but, That's but, what they said but what are proper sexual, proper human sexual rights? What are proper human sexual rights? Think about it for a minute. You're a journalist and you're smart. What exactly do you think would be meant by proper human sexual rights? It Who is. defines what proper sexual rights are? Who defines what you should be doing as an adult in your bedroom? Who should? There should be a legal document. We have a, we have a law, don't we have? The Constitution says something about canon knowledge. There's improper canon knowledge and there's Not the Constitution, canon. the criminal law. It's the criminal code. That's fine. So the criminal code takes inspiration from the Constitution. So it's the reason that we have no, the No, that, 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 that particular law it's my understanding I'm not a lawyer, but I do know that it dates from the colonial period. But it's still on our so books. I think it's very ironic for people to be talking about our cultural values and then be quoting a colonial era law. But it doesn't bother me because I think that we are products of, of, of if you like, two cultures. 
we have our traditional culture and we have modern culture and we're moving into the we moved into the modern era mm -hmm. we have a constitution we say we've signed up to democratic values it was Ghanaians who crafted our constitution I'm sure they crafted it very carefully I know a lot of people uh, the people who were involved in, 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 in drafting this constitution and they made sure because of our past because of our cultural heritage or whatever to be sure that we had strong human rights provisions so that minorities minorities would be protected and the constitution is very clear on that isn't it but you know lgbtq is currently illegal in ghana why is it illegal there's no law against the identity of being a gay person what law is there show me the There's police, no law. the police have been arresting people so they are they are doing something against the constitution and against the law i am telling you omaro i'm your journalist tell me what law exists in ghana against being gay there already are which and, law and, and this particular bill that which is which law I, I could i could dig it up for no, you. no 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 don't 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 confuse your 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 viewers viewers. Mm -hmm. viewers there is no law i can assure you in ghana against being gay there is no law there's no the law. closest that you will get that people could is the law against unnatural canal knowledge that colonial era law is what the british bequeathed it to us mm -hmm. we haven't removed it from our books yes. but and if that, that but listen mm -hmm. but listen mm -hmm. and again you see it takes a lot of education if somebody is gay does it automatically translate to the person having a natural canal knowledge how so if you're heterosexual does it automatically translate to you having sex yes natural canal no 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 have it no so what uh, you can't have a discretion on whether you have sex or not to begin with no it's not i do not think that so i'm saying that you cannot conflate heterosexual would mean automatically you have sex it so, would mean you have sex with the opposite gender right now, no but it doesn't yeah. it, it doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. if you identify me if i identify mm -hmm. as a heterosexual female mm -hmm. It does mean that I'm not attracted to the oppo to the same sex. Mm -hmm. It means you're attracted to the same sex. But it has nothing to do mm -hmm. with whether I'm going to have sex with that person or not. Sex is an activity, a choice. Some people may never have sex in their lives. Some people may have sex for a period of time and stop having sex, etc. So, so you cannot conflate the two. It, it's really important. But so currently, secondly, mm -hmm. secondly. Mm -hmm. A natural canal knowledge defined is not only restricted to homosexuals. You know that. Yes, it has more. Yes. So, so it's not just bestiality. Uh, the oral sex as well is a natural canal knowledge. Okay. Yes. Uh, a, a lot of Ghanaians don't know that. Mm -hmm. Anal sex is a natural canal knowledge, you know. And therefore, heterosexuals who indulge in those acts according to the law if we were to go strictly according to the law are just as guilty as homosexuals so currently so what is our beef mm -hmm. so currently based on this explanation you've given mm -hmm. homosexuality and for that matter lgbtqi plus it's a crime under our statutes no you, you are, are misquoting me i never said that i said no. homosexuality on, on is natural, not a crime i'm saying that unnatural canon knowledge is what has been defined by our law has been wrong yes and it's a and sexual LGBT practice okay. it is not tied to an identity what is that sexual practice the sexual practice in the law that says that it's a natural canon knowledge that's why i say how do whether you people have sex? I, I have no idea i'm not <laughs> I have no idea. But what you have I'm no not, idea and you're promoting the... No, listen, mm -hmm. I'm not promoting the... I mean, you're supporting... You know, uh, uh, this is a serious conversation. I am very serious. Let's be serious. I am very serious. If we're defending people's... Listen to me for one yes. minute. Okay. If we are defending people's human rights and we are saying that you have a, a bill that is going against so many human rights established in the Constitution, Conventions you, this country, have signed up to, international conventions, 
regional conventions, the African Charter for Human Rights, for example, that, 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 that says that you cannot discriminate based on sexual preference, you know, et cetera. Um, not too long ago, we had the ECOWAS, uh, Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament come here, you know, and articulate grave concerns about this bill we're going to pass, you know. So when you have all of those things, we're not going to trivialize it. And I'm just saying, and maybe we're, again, I think we're spending too much time on this point. But the point that has to be made is that we do not have a law on our books against LGBTQ. Okay, let me put my we, question And, and mm -hmm. that we have a law, you know, dealing with unnatural carnal knowledge, okay. and that is not reserved just for LGBTQ. It is anybody who practices anything people consider as unnatural carnal knowledge. Let me come back. What in the bill or the proposed bill do you consider as an affront to the human rights of LGBTQI practitioners? I shall list them. Okay. There's about clause 15 of our constitution. All persons shall be entitled to freedom of association, and I'm picking this one in particular mm -hmm. because I hope you will understand. Go ahead. Entitled freedom of association, which shall include freedom to form or join, blah, 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 mm -hmm. trade unions, other associations, national, international. The bill says that they cannot gather as an association. So that's contract, meaning so, so that, that all rights. persons are entitled, but don't you see I'm, that? I'm, I'm, right. All persons are entitled to freedom of speech and expression which shall include the freedom of the press and other media. The bill says that anybody, anybody, whether, and I'm trying to read the portion, um, the bill says whether through text, whether through broadcast, whether through whatever, film, you know, uh, through the internet, you're seen as advocating for for the rights of LGBTQ persons, you could be jailed. Mm. Mm? Mm -hmm. Why? Okay. Don't I have freedom of speech and expression? Can I not decide that I disagree okay. with, 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 okay. with a certain position so let's that a, I think is against human rights? Let's take a few, one more. Mm -hmm. uh, the number one on the list, yeah. association, freedom of association. It's not number one on the list, actually. Number okay. one but on one the, of the list ones you mentioned. is the right of speech and, okay. and, and expression. One of the, one, the ones you listed. Okay. You mentioned the right to association or freedom mm -hmm. of association. Mm -hmm. The right now, to assemble. Okay, right to assemble. Mm -hmm. Prostitution is a crime in Ghana. Mm -hmm. There is an association of prostitutes but, but it is illegal. They cannot come out in the public. Are you suggesting that we should have an association of prostitutes in Ghana based on this, considering that unnatural canal knowledge has been illegalized? You are saying that this group of people can have an association, LGBTQI? I'm not quite sure I, I see what you mean by unnatural canal knowledge. LGBTQ been... currently, if you practice I, it I, anywhere, I, I keep... the police will arrest you. If yeah. you promote it in any way, that's why we but saw the police. I'm go to saying that they, they but that's why the courts free them. Yeah. You know why the courts free them? The, Did you ask yourself why the courts free them? Is it because of want of prosecution? Of course. But want what of are prosecution you does not necessarily mean. What the are you prosecuting that, them on? But they were not tried and 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 allowed to go. No, no. They were not even uh, tried. Omar, I don't think you've done your homework properly. I have. Because if you had, you mm. will realize. Mm -hmm that they were freed because there was no, there was no charge could be preferred against them. What was the charge? But we see that often. Uh, so, so what was but, the charge? But, that, but, but I, that's why mm -hmm. we need laws. And that's why we need constitution. So that's not why they're bringing this bill to become a law that says that henceforth there's a proper definition. But why, what, 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 what is our objection to an adult, a consenting adult, deciding their own sexuality? What is our problem with that? If an adult says, I want to start having sex with cows, for instance, you're saying that person should be allowed. No, the cow will not be consenting. Will the cow be consenting? The cow will not. The but cow will not be consenting. Yes. So don't, don't, don't compare apples with oranges. Okay. If two the consenting, of, mm -hmm. consenting human adults, adults, human adults, mm -hmm. two, mm -hmm. 
consenting human adults. If you decide that you want to go and have sex with and somebody 18 years old and above, mm -hmm. even if I don't agree with your choice, I don't, I have no right. Okay. The okay. LGBTQI. So, so mm -hmm. by the same token, if two consenting adults decide that they want to have sex with one another, why does the state care? The, LG... the church can decide mm -hmm. that it's against our church doctrines and morality. Maybe if you belong to that church, they can excommunicate you. That's yes. okay. Yes. That's the church. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. But not a state that has a constitution in which they said you cannot discriminate against anybody in your country based on difference. On the issue of consent, LGBTQI has a plus at the end, and we have been told that that plus means it's ready and willing to incorporate a lot of other groups. I have listened to, uh, sorry, I've listened to a lawyer um, who is supporting this particular bill. He, Fwamweni, that's his name, he has defined the LGBTQI plus to include a lot of groups, including what he calls pansexual. He says pansexual means having sex with inanimate objects, including a loaf of bread. Now, that cannot be consensual sex if take, it's going to happen. Take a very deep breath, Omaro, because this is almost laughable to me. Take a deep breath mm -hmm. and think to yourself, why would a state, mm -hmm. a state with hungry people, poor people, unemployed youth, uh, uh, so many issues, a parliament, mm -hmm. so, a parliament that ought to be passing bills like the broadcast bill where we've seen manifest the results of not having a broadcast bill. So a young kid was killed by fellow kids because they saw something on television. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? So you have to ask yourself, why would they care whether in the future somehow people will be mad enough to want to have sex with bread? What? Why is it the biggest of our problems? But, but for the promoters, no, they, 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 they say that that's how absurd it is. And if you allow it to go, that's how the plus will keep increasing. All that this How is does up. it injure the state, Omar Sanda? How does it, how does it injure anybody? Because they say they are protecting anybody. Ghanaian family values. That's not a Ghanaian family value, is it? So they really should, if they really believe in protecting Ghanaian family values, they should have a bill against men who cheat on their wives. This is they true. should. Okay. Because as for that one, mm -hmm. I'm sure we can even get statistics. And women who cheat very on their And, and women, women who okay. cheat on Let their Let me husband. come back. This is face to face. Very, very easily. Face to face on City TV. My name is Omar Sandaman. Uh, Professor Odrigaja is my guest. We'll come back to wrap this up. Don't go away. Life is too short, I know if you waste time. Oh. Where they up at this why on a they sleep, make you a tambo. Oh. Who they call me if you know the party, call me later. Oh. If your girlfriend no go go, call your side take it, make a link combo. As I'm on a samantha buffet, and I will go check cake. Good day, energy drink. Excessive drinking can be detrimental to your health. Not recommended for persons under 18 years, lactating mothers, pregnant women, and people sensitive to caffeine. This advert is FDA approved. You welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. We're having a conversation on the promotion of proper human sexual rights in Ghanaian Family Values Bill. And a counter memorandum that has been brought by a group of 18 people who signed and said, do not let this go through. On the issue of association, right to association, so I mentioned the part of a prostitution, which is currently illegal. The, in fact, before we started this interview, I had a conversation with one of the proponents of the bill, Samuel George, and he, he asked me um, whether, by what you are promoting, you are also suggesting that armed robbers can have an association which is a criminal group of people, but they decide that this is what we believe in, this is what we want to do, and that we can form an association. Is that the kind of thing you're promoting? No, because it's a wrong analogy. Okay. Armed robbers are engaged in clear, 
crime. That is in our criminal code, but more importantly, their activities infringe on the rights of others. Okay. If somebody robs you, they've taken something away from you. Mm -hmm. When they are armed, they can hurt you, they can kill you and all of that. So, so, of course, we can't allow them to do that because they are advertising an intent mm -hmm. to engage in activity that the nature of which means that they are going to be harming other people. I am saying that an LGBTQI person is not engaging in any activity that is going to harm anybody. Let me list some for you. When I okay. spoke to Sam George, he said to me, for instance, on the issue of adoption, an LGBTQ family or couple may choose to adopt your child and they would lead your child, quote and unquote, astray because they invite them into that. That okay, can not, I? Can, that, that's harming. Yeah, let me, let, me just, let me just respond to mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. There are adoption laws. Again, there are so many laws in this country. There are adoption laws in this country. In fact, even some heterosexuals can't adopt because the adoption laws don't allow them to adopt mm -hmm. for all kinds of reasons. Mm -hmm. The adoption laws um, sort of promote adoption within two unit families, for example. Mm -hmm. of, it doesn't mean that a single person can't adopt. But it, it's usually hard and all of that. So the adoption laws. The adoption laws can decide that if you are uh, uh, gay, you don't, we will not allow you to adopt a child. The laws can decide to do that. You don't have a problem with that? No, I'm saying that. So that cannot be the argument. Okay. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That cannot be the argument for a whole bill that tramples on people's human rights. A whole bill that goes against the Constitution. Because you see... When we start undermining provisions in our constitution because we think, well, it doesn't, it doesn't you know, pertain to me, we undermine our larger democracy. Okay? That's why people like us, who are not necessarily in that community, feel a need to defend that community. And we should have a right to defend them. It's good you mentioned that you're not in that community. So clarify to my camera now. That you are not necessarily LGBTQI person, but you are pushing this. I want to understand that. I'm pushing what? You are anti the bill. Yes. But you are not an LGBTQI person. Why do I have to declare my sexuality? No, I just want to know if you, you want know, to declare. But no, I mean, I don't have a problem. I am proud that I'm heterosexual. Okay. But I don't have, I'm not declaring my heterosexuality in opposition to LGBTQI people. You no, can't be bothered. My, I mean, no as it's as not it, a question it, of it, not it. being bothered. Mm -hmm. I am who I am. That's my identity. Okay? And yeah. I embrace my identity and I support their right How about to the, embrace their own identity. It doesn't have to be my identity. I'm a Muslim. Are you Christian? I am Christian, yes. Your church and the Bible does not support it, does it? Oh, it depends. That the, I do know and I'm not Catholic, but I do know that the Pope is very empathetic to the LGBTQ people. Okay. I do know that. For well, how about your own church? I don't go to church. You don't? <laughs> Why? <laughs> because of distance? Or? No, no, no. But you're no. a Christian. Yeah. You read the Bible I self, and believe. I self-identify as read? Christian. But you see, it's not about my faith. No, I just and, want to know something. And I don't, no, I, I I, I don't like arguments are, that personalize. No, there are lots of people who would personalize this because yeah. when they watch And I'm know, encouraging people not to personalize but it. it. It's not about Audrey. I, I have not... Uh, but the I, message is as good as a messenger, isn't no, it? No, no, it's not about Audrey. Mm -hmm. It's about the message. And because the message it, of Audrey mm -hmm. is that there is a bill before Parliament that is egregious, that is odious, because it, it tramples on the rights of fellow Ghanaians, and it, it, the bill does not seem to take cognizance that we have a constitution that seeks to promote the protection of minorities and the vulnerable. And let me just read something, because mm -hmm. I don't want you um, to, you know, to run out of time. Okay. Let me just read something that I found very revealing. And this is um, something that Justice Amwasechi, his, his, his... Reconciliation Commission. Yes. He was a chair of the 
National Reconciliation Committee, a very respected judge, in 1992, in a judgment of the Supreme Court, said he affirmed the right of MPP versus the IGP to assemble, to demonstrate, and process against a repressive public order decree. Okay? And Amar Sechi, it's almost like he was thinking about this debate, said that, and I read, in countries that practice true democracy, supporters and opponents of every conceivable cause, I repeat, supporters and opponents of every conceivable cause are given freedom to associate and express their views. In the end, some have succeeded, and their unpopular demands have eventually become majority wishes and have been recognized. The examples are the anti-slavery groups in 18th century England and 19th century America, and the suffragettes of both countries at the beginning of this century. In this day and age, it is necessary for us to see that consent, not force, is the basis of a just society, and that it is not for government or our neighbor to tell us what to think or feel or do. Okay. Except, I'm not done, mm -hmm. in a time of, of war, mm -hmm. when a state of emergency has been declared, it cannot be right for any agency of the executive to suppress the free expression of any opinion, however unpopular that opinion may be. The believer in absolutism, the anarchist, those who oppose equal rights for women, and yes, lesbians and homosexuals too, he wrote this in here, okay. are all entitled to the free expression of their views and the right to assemble and demonstrate in support of those views. I haven't seen the judgment. My last question. If Check you it out. If you showed up in church on Sunday and your pastor called you aside and opened the Bible to the chapter that talks about Sodom and Gomorrah and says to you that what you are supporting which is against Sodom and Gomorrah, flies in the face of the Bible, and oh. that he thinks you are not doing what the Bible teaches you to practice. What I, would you say to I would tell my pastor that, one, I'm supporting people's rights. I'm not, I'm not promoting homosexuality. I'm supporting the rights of LGBTQ I people even if those rights fly against their, your beliefs. No, your they beliefs. don't fly against my beliefs because I read the Bible differently. Okay. And I would try and educate my your pastor, pastor. Wow. and tell my pastor that he should go back and read the New Testament. Okay. And when he reads the New Testament, he should be sure to read what Jesus said about Mary Magdalene, and I'm sure you know it. Mm -hmm. He who is without sin should cast, cast the first stone. There you go. And here is okay. it how we put the stone down on face to face. It's been an exciting conversation with Professor Audrey Gadget. We've discussed communication in media and we've discussed the promotion of um, proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian family values and his, her opposition to the same. My name is Umaru Sandam and we thank you for watching face to face. Stay with City TV. It's your world.